In this lesson, we'll take a look at the shuffle function inside the random module. The shuffle function accepts a list as an argument and it shuffles it, or in other words, it randomizes the order of the elements within it, much like you would shuffle a deck of cards in real life. Now, it's important to note that the list is going to be mutated in place, so it's going to be modified permanently. The shuffle function itself is going to return none. So if you want to keep the original order of elements in your list, we're going to have to find a solution for that. We'll talk about that in just a second. Now, because the shuffle function requires a mutable object, it does not accept immutable objects like tuples or strings, basically only lists. So here's how it's going to work. On line number three, I'm going to declare a list called characters. And this is going to be a list of the kind of characters that I can select in an online role-playing game. So let's say we have a warrior. We're going to have a druid. Let's say a hunter, a rogue, and a mage. So what I want to do below is I'm going to take my random module and I'm going to access the shuffle function and I'm going to feed in my characters list. Now, the reason I want to print this is I want to show you that the return value of the shuffle function itself is going to be none right? We're not going to get back the list mutated. We're not going to get back a copy of the list with the order of elements uh, mixed up. This function is just meant to be run by itself, right? The return value is of no significance here. However, if we take a look at characters after the invocation, we'll see that the order of elements within the list has been completely swapped around. So it used to be that we had warrior and druid first. Now we have druid and mage and so on. Now, if you don't want to mutate the original list because, for example, the order of elements within it may be important for your program, a very common strategy is to create a copy or a clone of the original list and then feed in that copy to the shuffle function. That way, the original list and its order remains unaffected. And Python allows us to make a copy through several different approaches. We have the list slicing syntax. We have the copy method on a list object. And we even have the copy function within the copy module. So let's do a quick review of that. So the very first way that we can create a clone, which I can assign to a variable called clone, is to simply take my list of characters and then use list slicing syntax, which is just going to be square brackets and a colon. And that's going to iterate over every single element and then push it into a brand new list. And then we'll have that available in a totally separate independent duplicate copy. Here, here called clone. We also have on every list object in Python an actual method called copy, which we can invoke like so. And finally, again, we have a copy module. So I can import copy right below random right here. And here I can assign clone to taking my copy module. And on that module, we have a copy function. Again, just like date time, this is a classic example of a module and an attribute within it having the same name, but that's totally legal copy module that has a copy function, which we can feed in our characters list. And all three of these approaches will do the exact same thing. They'll create a clone of the characters list. Now it's important to note that this approach will only work for lists uh, that are like this. Or in other words, what these three things will do is they will create a shallow copy. So they're really great if you have a list of strings or integers or booleans. However, if you have a list with more complex objects like lists or dictionaries, it's not going to create copies of those internal objects. So for something like that, you may recall that there is a deep copy function available on the copy module. There is a section or a lesson in this course where we talk about that. But for this problem, these are all suitable approaches for creating a copy. And what we can do now is copy this code, paste it down below. And instead of calling the shuffle function with characters, I'm simply going to call it with a clone. Again, the print here is not important because shuffle is simply going to return none. But now what I can do is take a look at both characters as well as clone after the fact. So you'll notice characters now is going to remain unaffected. Here it is uh, output warrior, druid, hunter, rogue, mage, the exact same order we have it right here on line number four. And that's because we haven't done anything with that characters list. However, our clone, our copy of characters has been affected. Uh, remember, it started off in this exact same order, but now we have rogue and hunter coming up first. So if you need to preserve the order of the original list before you shuffle it, well, then what you can do is just create a copy of it and that will do that for you. And that's all there is to cover in this lesson. We talked about the shuffle function. It's another function available on the random module. As you can see from this lesson, the, the last couple ones, the random module does things related to randomness or mixing things up or generating a random number, or in this case, generating a random order. You simply give it a list and it shuffles the order of the elements within that list. 
the list will be mutated in place and the shuffle function itself uh, will return none. And again, as a reminder, the shuffle function cannot accept an immutable object like a tuple or a string because we can't shift around the elements in a tuple and we can't shift around the characters in a string. So the only thing that you can really feed in here to the shuffle function is a list. And again, in an application where you might need the concept of randomness, for example, if you're using a list of a, a bunch of cards and you're building a card game, in that example, this may be really helpful for shuffling up those cards. All right, that's all there's to cover in this lesson, so I will see you in the next one.